Alright, so welcome to the very first video tutorial ever created by Two Tribes. Uh, my name is Martijn and today I'm going to show you all about the Tokitori 2 level editor. In case you don't know anything about Tokitori 2, uh, just uh, watch this video and if you're interested in this game, simply write an email to tokitori2 at twotribes.com and we'll provide you with a free Steam beta key. So, let's continue with the level editor itself. Uh, by pressing tab you can open up the level editor, pressing tab again will return to the game. On the left we have a toolbar here uh, with uh, the usual draw tools, the flood fill tool, hand tool, selection tool, etc. It looks a little bit like the Photoshop um, um, toolbar and it shares some of the same uh, shortcuts as well. So for those that are familiar with uh, Photoshop I'm sure you're pretty happy that we, uh, that we did that. On the right we have entity, uh, the Entity Properties window, if I select an entity like that, for instance Tokitori, um, you can see all kind of inf information on Tokitori, or in this case for instance on um, the collectible. Below that we have the Entity Library, with various um, entities that are currently present in Tokitori 2. Below that we have the tile window, uh, which contains all kinds of tiles, for instance solid tiles, stairs, and if I select a draw tool I can simply draw a wall here. If I return to the game, suddenly Tokitori is not able to continue anymore. I can remove the wall by pressing right clicking uh, when the draw tool is selected. I can for instance add some stairs here and just walk on it like that. Alright, um, so let's continue with uh, the editor itself. Yeah, on top here we have uh, a couple of menus, for instance the file menu, edit menu, selection menu, uh, the view menu. Uh, this might be very useful to uh, disable, uh, for instance, the, uh, the foreground and the background. And I'll disable the background. The attributes layer, which are the tiles that you'll walk on. And the foreground. Uh, you can also zoom in and out, like that. You can also use Control plus or minus for that to do that, or page up and page down. And all the way down, we have a status bar which displays the level name, uh, whether or not you have unsafe changes, um, some extra information, some hints, and the X and Y coordinates of your uh, mouse pointer, as well as the width and the height of your selection, like that. And it also displays the number of entities that are currently present in Tokitori. So, well, let's just continue with uh, the example right here. Oh, by the way, which is also pretty useful, you can also hold the space bar um, and scroll around the level. Like that. Alright, so let's continue with the level. Oh, by the way, I noticed that I uh, accidentally disabled pole right here. It should be on the foreground, like that. But uh, as explained here, you can press view and disable the foreground to get rid of him, like that. So, I've shown you how to draw tiles and how to draw a stair. Um, so how can we add creatures or entities, as we call them, to the game? Uh, for instance, there's uh, one walking right here you can uh, select the entity move tool or just holding control and just drag around um, the entity um, I can also draw entities and I'll, for instance this bubble frog is, is pretty alone right now so let's give him an eatable friend, an edible friend um, alright so it's here but I don't see it that's because entities need to be reloaded. In order to do that, you need to press Ctrl E, like that. And as you see, right now, we have the, the berry bug running around, and the frog, who's obviously very interested in him. Oh, and there's a little bug right here. It was right, there it is, and, it, and it's eaten. There are still, still some bugs in, in Tokitori. Um, not only berry bugs, but real bugs as well. We'll try to fix them later on. Alright, so just let's continue with this example level. Um, if I go back to um, the editor again, I can also delete or remove entities by right clicking on them. So now it's gone and I can for instance replace it with a bubble frog right here. And this will be a nice um, 
uh, this can be a nice way to show you uh, the different uh, properties that we have. For instance, if I reload this level right now, there is a bubble frog that walks to the left and it falls down. Well, perhaps you don't want that uh, because you add a berry bug right here, like that, and he cannot see it. Alright, so what do you do? You select the entity again by pressing control, holding control and selecting the entity. You see the information right here and you want its starting direction to the right, like that. So if I reload it right now, it starts to the right and it eats the berry bug and it's bloated. I can also alternatively, alternatively remove the berry bug and have the, the frog start in a bloated state, like that. And now it's loaded. I demonstrated how to place a bubble frog and a berry bug. Another very useful entity to use is the berry bug nest, and I can show you by example exactly what it does. Let me place some death tiles right here. Reload the entities and kill this little bastard. As you can see, he dies and he never returns. Uh, and for a player, this can be pretty frustrating because um, he might need that specific berry bug in order to solve a puzzle. So in, or in order to overcome that we've come up with um, the berry bug nest and what it does it simply respawns um, all the berry bugs that are attached to that nest. So I select the berry bug and I have a nest right here and now this berry bug uh, is attached to this nest so if I kick it again it, it will be respawned. And you can uh, attach any number of berry bugs to that, so um, the minute a berry bug that is attached to that nest gets killed, it will be respawned um, at this uh, particular nest. Alright, so let's restore to the previous situation. You can always go back by undoing. You can also redo, as you can see. And make a, a more complex situation, which is uh, a bird. We can now place the bird right here, and if we reload the level, it will pick me up, but it doesn't do a lot, because it doesn't know where to fly to, so a bird needs to know where to go to, it needs to know its nest. So what we do right now is we place a nest, and we attach the bird's nest to that nest over here. But as you can also see, it needs to have a waypoint needs to know where to fly, it needs to know where to scour. So what we need to do is we make a waypoint, which is this one, right here, and one above his nest, like that. So we select the bird again, uh, we click on first waypoint, which is this one, then we select the waypoint, and it doesn't have any previous waypoint, it does have a next waypoint, which is this one, and I select that one. And uh, now I select this waypoint and I, s uh, I make sure the previous waypoint is set to that waypoint. Well, that's a lot more complex, but let me show you what it does. Control E picks me up, it goes to the specific waypoints and it drops me. Like that. Alright, so let's continue with an even more complex um, example. Let's get rid of all the entities right here. A complex uh, example would be the warp sources, the, the warps, uh, portals and power sources. Um, a warp portal needs to have two uh, portals in order to work. And it also needs to have two power sources in order to work. So let me place two power sources right here uh, with uh, two portals, just here and one over there, for instance. Um, if you select the portals, you can see that, that they have a color property. Just select a random color, for instance yellow, and this one as well. They need to be connected. And also make sure that you don't have more than two um, um, of the same color in the same level. Uh, you cannot have more than uh, two blue uh, portals or two yellow portals. And also you cannot have one. So if you have one color, you need to have two portals of that same color. Alright, so I now have both portals uh, selected to yellow. 
and I select the warp portal itself, uh, the, the source, the power source, and let me select its portal. So this one is connected. This one is connected to this portal, and I'd like to connect this one to that portal. I'll do it like this. So now the, the portals are connected, and if I reload the level, I can see a Tokitoro is still standing over there. The other por portals are yellow, and they are working like that. Another thing that might be interesting for you to know is that you can use the is controllable flag right here if you set it. And you reload the entities again. You see that this one is controllable. Like that. Alright, so let's continue with the level. Get rid of these uh, portals right here. Reload it. Um, another thing that I'd like to show you is the selection utility that we have. It's M, or use the selection utility uh, icon right here. You can drag around and um, copy it, cut or paste it, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Um, if you just copy around like that, then you can place it right here. It also copies the entities that are present in. Um, the selection, uh, for instance, right here. Let me put in a couple of butterflies. By the way, by using, uh, if if you hold down Alt like this, you can place them uh, on non-square positions, which is pretty nice. Um, all right. So uh, let me make a selection of this. Control C, Control V, and now I have the same selection over here. And the nice thing is, um, it's now copied into the Windows or Mac uh, buffer and you can paste it because it's text you can paste it in any text editor that you'd like for instance you can stick it in an email send it over to a friend for him to test out or, um, or uh, over MSN or whatever you want to so it's, it's very easy you can simply paste it because it's text alright so this is my level right now and another thing that's um, that's good to know if I go back right here if I, for instance, place a bubble frog right here and I want it to be bloated, like that. Um, if I reload the level, well, that one is bloated. And if I now copy this, it also copies the property of that bubble frog. Properties of that bubble frog. So if I do this, it's also bloated. So it also copies um, the selected properties of that entity, which is pretty useful. For instance, if you have a lot of berry bugs that are all uh, attached to the same nest you can simply uh, um, make one berry bug attach it to the nest and then copy it all the way so you have all the berry bugs um, attached to the same nest all right so let's continue with the level there are a lot of butterflies there let me get rid of those might hurt the frame rate a little bit. Alright, they're gone. Another useful tool um, is the notes tool. Um, simply press N or select this tool over here to write a notes. Um, you can write down anything you want to. Uh, if there's anything that you'd like to remind yourself to, uh, simply place a note there. Or if you have your game or your level tested by others, uh, you can simply place a note for them so that they are um, so that they know your intention for that particular part of the level. Let me continue. All right, so I pretty much uh, reached the end of this tutorial. I can show you some some of the things that I didn't show uh, show you before. For instance, uh, I can add water, and there's water. I could uh, add lava as well, and I'm sure that frog is not going to like it. Nope, he isn't. So, we've come to the end of uh, this uh, video tutorial. Um, don't forget to save your level. You do this with Ctrl S, like that. And if you've created like a very cool level, 
uh, simply uh, open up the levels folder. You do this with um, file open levels folder. Select your level.tt level and send it over to us. Um, you can do that by sending it to tokitori2 at twotribes.com. And we'd love to receive your uh, creations uh, just to see uh, what people are able to, uh, to create. If you also need more help, um, press F1 and you'll be uh, redirected to our website uh, on which there are various shortcuts and tips and tricks for, for this editor. Um, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed it and um, enjoy playing around with the editor.